Okay. We are thankful to the Lord in everything. In everything and also sometimes in spite of everything that happens. Uh, the thought that has been on our heart today is about having the Lord our portion. It's a big, very powerful thought. Because if the Lord is our portion, it means like he is the great jewel. He is everything. So, Father, we ask you that you give us grace to esteem you, who you are, what you have done and what you have attained for us, and your power of love in us right now to esteem you more and more by the help of the Holy Spirit. We cannot understand anything how great you are, how good you are, how holy you are, how gracious you are, how loving you are, how awesome you are, how majestic you are, without the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that the Holy Spirit's been given to us and in us for this purpose, to magnify you, to magnify you, and to see you in the King Messiah, your only beloved Son. So we pray for your help. We pray for the help. Uh, we pray for your help in the war right now, that you guide all the details, and that you would take those that are still in captivity, being kidnapped, that you bring more and more of them home. We thank you for the two, two uh, gentlemen who were able to come home. Uh, heal their hurts. Heal them now as they are back home and show them your grace, your kindness, and your salvation. Physical and spiritual salvation. Show them your goodness. We pray all this in the name of Yeshua, the worthy one in your precious name, and help the government of Israel, the leadership of Israel, to walk in your ways, yes. in your precious name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> For the next few moments, we want to talk about this. Is the Lord our portion? And how the Lord can and should be our portion? This is very practical at the same time. In the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 41 and 42, 41 and 42, uh, our Lord, Messiah, Yeshua, when he was traveling in different uh, towns and healing and uh, feeding the poor and doing marvelous things, giving great teachings like no one had ever taught, His satisfaction was to come to a home where he can be himself. Not only that, but where there are ears to hear him. So it says here, And Yeshua answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. Or in another English, you are careful. And troubled about many things. There's so many things happening mm -hmm. and so many things we could be distracted. I can be very easily distracted, but God can very easily set me back on a track. If we just call on him, as, as quickly as we call on him, he's available to get us back on a track. Mm -hmm. You are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, Miriam, Mary, Mariam hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. She has chosen that good part. The good part was even beyond getting the foods for the Lord, which was very noble, but first of all, let him unload what is in his heart. 
if we have chosen him as a portion, it's a very good thing to pray this way. Lord, what is in your heart? Uh, one of the best prayers I heard one wise, older gentleman pray was, he always prayed, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear, and give me your heart to hear, hearing heart, obeying heart, loving heart. That's right. Now, in a book of Ecclesiastes, it's called Kohelet. It comes from the word kahal, which is congregation. So the congregation leader, or in this case, it is King Solomon. Uh, I'm not going into the argument. Some people try to disprove it's King Solomon. I have no question about it. It is because he's the son of David, the preacher, the wise man. And he writes many times about our portion. So I'm going to read a couple of verses only, what he talks about our portion. Chapter 3, verse 22. Wherefore I perceived that there's nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for this is his portion, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Hmm. Is this the greatest thing in life? Remember, King Solomon wrote all these things, as he said, with the wisdom under the sun. He's writing with the wisdom under the sun. Do everything that's in your power and rejoice in your works. Well, this is a gift of God, but we know there's something greater, to rejoice in his works, who he is and what he's done. But when we are settled with that, that he is the goal, then we can enjoy everything that he's given us to do in his will. But that's a different thing than seeing everything under the sun. Ecclesiastes is an amazing book to reorientate us to God's purpose. Ecclesiastes 5, 18 and 19. Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him, for this is his portion. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. It is truly gift of God. But Mary went for the food and drink. For uh, Sorry, Martha. Martha put food and drink first. And Yeshua said, no, there's something more important. Imagine how our Lord wants ears to hear, to hear about his salvation, to hear about his nature, to hear about the eternal thoughts of his goodness and his love and to hear what he says about his own work to us through his word, through his spirit, alone, but especially in the fellowship of his own. So I'm going to leave Ecclesiastes right here. It's a labor of love. Yes, I'm going to leave Ecclesiastes here and then go to a couple of statements in Isaiah. Taking Yeshaya or Isaiah, Isaiah 17 and 14. And it talks about the situation among the nations. Behold, at evening tide, trouble, and before the morning, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. So this is the portion of those that want to destroy Israel. That is the portion of those 
that wanted to destroy Israel. But I want to move on to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and verse 12. There it says, After the prophet reveals the great suffering, the atoning suffering of our Lord that he accomplished for us 2,000 years ago, almost 2,000 years ago. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great? I will divide him, the Messiah, portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He has the portion with the great. He is the heir. <coughs> he is the heir. You remember the... He inherits all things. It would be his right anyway because of creation. But now it is his right also because he purchased and redeemed. So he's the heir and he will... Divide, divide the portion. And then then uh, Isaiah 57 verse 6. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. This is to the people that were not doing the right things. They were the people that were called seed of the falsehood. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion in the river. They, that they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering and thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in this? Now that's a very deep passage that would take a lot of meditation. But their portion is among the smooth stones of the river. Aha, uh -huh. there's a little hint here. Who was the man who took the smooth stones from the river? David. David took the smooth stones from the river. And the Goliath, Goliath, they say in the West, Goliath, who was the mighty man, got one of these smooth stones from the river into his very wise mind, which had not one thought from God. So there's a challenge, challenge here against not to go against the good God, God who is good. Isaiah 61 verse 7. For your shame ye shall have double. That is for Israel. Israel has been shamed. That's for all the children of God who have been put to shame. Everybody who's been shamed for the right cause, for the, for the cause of God and his kingdom and his Messiah. For your shame you shall have double. What, whenever we suffer for his cause, God has something better. God will give us double, double portion. Double portion was normally uh, given to the heir, Bechor is in Hebrew, the firstborn son, double portion. But it says, for your shame, Israel, you'll have, sh you'll have double. When we are shamed, there's a double blessing. It's coming. It's on the way. I can't tell what way. It depends. And for, for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess Double in their land, they shall possess the double. Now Israel had to go seventy years into Babylonian captivity. I mean, sorry, Jewish nation. Uh, the ten tribes have been way longer. In their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. But there's a little little sentence here that we could stay all day on this. 
they shall rejoice in their portion. What was King Solomon talking about? King Solomon was saying that uh, in Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, that we have our portion in this life. We are to rejoice our portion. Now, now that's absolutely right. We have to rejoice in our, have to, we, are, we have a privilege and also need to rejoice in our portion. All these things, foods and drinks and economy, are blessings from God. But there's just a greater portion. Sometimes a good thing is the worst enemy of the best. A good thing is the worst enemy of the best, as also in this case. So that's why seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. By the way, we're very, very happy to see Fatim back. And we were certainly, you were in our heart. So glad to see you back. So are we rejoicing in our portion? If we look at our portion by sight, by our understanding... By human wisdom, we can criticize our portion. There's one person who could have really criticized his portion is Daniel, the prophet. When he was born, it was right before the captivity. He was a young boy, teenager in our terms. And as soon as he reads a teenage years, his portion was to go to captivity. Enemy land, he was brought to the royal palace of the enemy king, the king that robbed Israel, and, but he executed the judgments that God had said would happen. So he is, his portion is to serve God in Babylon, this is not easy. If he had a rebellious heart in any way, if he went by sight, if he had decided his own portion, if he had not given it to God, he would have said, no, 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 I, I'll do what I have to do, but I'm not going to rejoice in my portion. If we make God as our portion, as we will see, then we can rejoice in God, in any portion that he gives to us. And we can succeed and we can be blessed. If God is our portion, if the Lord is our portion, if we have eyes to see the goodness of God in the land of the living, a deceitful heart would say, no, 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 I, I cannot serve God in Babylon. Well, we know Babylon is different, it's difficult. But no one can stop us from seeing the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm, I'm going to move on a little bit from here to a couple of things that Jeremiah had to say. Yirmiyahu, which means the exaltation of God. Yirmiyah, Jeremiah, whose name means the exaltation of God. We, we praise him. We exalt him. We lift up his name. Remember all the goodness, like in Psalm 103, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases. Well, some of the Healing may have to wait for the time when we get the new body, but a lot of the healing may come also in this time because God is God and he can do anything. But the ultimate healing, of course, is in our new body. We know that. We know that. But we exult in him. Jeremiah 10, verse 16. Remember the forgiveness of sins. Remember, we've been justified by his blood. And that's why we always 
run away from the world and sin. And we cleave to the goodness of the Lord because sin spoils our feast. He always is ready to forgive. Now, Jeremiah 10, verse 16. The portion of Jacob, of Yaakov, is not like them, for he is the former of all things. So the portion of Jacob is not like idols. It's not not like the vanity uh, in a context. He is not like them. So when we see... God is the portion of Jacob. It doesn't say here Israel, it says Yaakov. Yaakov is weak. Yaakov is weak in himself. But still, God is his portion. Yaakov did not choose God as his portion because of his own cleverness, but God taught him on the way. God taught him as he went and Many of the options that he had in his life, they were removed one by one. That's our story. When we were born and opened our eyes and grew up a little bit, we meant we went into many byways and strange ways, and we didn't always understand. But the Lord began to show to us his goodness until we became his children. It's called new birth. The portion of Yaakov is not like them. So we see radically the difference. The world, the vanities, the idols, the lies from the world, the deceptions from the world, they are nothing like the portion of Yaakov. If we make God our portion, we have the same portion as Yaakov. The man who was also weak, but whom God always helped. And there's a little hint here, actually a very great hint, to anybody that reads the Bible. It's this. Whoever has God as their portion, it's the same portion as the portion of Yaakov. Therefore, anti-Semitism has no place in the life of a believer. True believer cannot hate Israel, which is the portion of God. I'm not even going to balance it now. I mean, we could say that, yeah, Israel has so many faults, and and we understand that it's all true. But we understand Israel's importance because of God. So when the nations of the world say, we take the Bible, we read this, but we don't care for Israel and the land and the people. They don't understand that they take and they share in the portion of Jacob and they throw Jacob out. Cannot do that. (laughs) For he is the former of all things. He is the maker and former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Israel is the staff and the rod of the inheritance of God. And he measures his inheritance by Israel as his rod. Okay, we also know that this is Israel, which will be brought into redemption. I know that. I know that. But don't throw away the... I know you don't. But don't throw away the clay, which is the proper clay that doesn't look like the vessel yet. The clay is proper clay, but the work is not done yet. I know you understand that, but I want to say this because many people hear this. Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name, Adonai Tsevaot. We Israelis love this name, Adonai Tsevaot the Lord of the armies. Armies. I could take an hour about this, but let's move on. That's what Jeremiah said. Uh, I love this man's ministry so much. He was... um, I can read the whole book of Isaiah, and I'm amazed at the wisdom and the depth and everything. 
But when, the, when you come to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah says certain things in few sentences like nobody else. He power packs huge things into short sentences because uh, his life was the life of prayer. And not to discount Isaiah, who was uh, so wise. Again, Isaiah 51, verses 17 and 19. I'm going to, 17, 18, and 19. I'm going to read the whole context here. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. That's kind of like foolish. Uh, every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. The, the idol-worshipping kingdoms, they dedicated what they did and they work uh, to the idols, and they gave glory to the idols. But then God says, they are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. There's a time of visitation when God's going to destroy everything that is false. So everyone that has chosen a wrong portion, portion that is not like the portion of Jacob, yes, these false foundations shall perish. And again, Isaiah uses the same term. Ah, sorry, Jeremiah. Sorry, Jeremiah, I confused your name. <laughs> Verse 19, the portion of Yaakov, Jacob, is not like them. It's not like them. It's not like them. God we have is not like anything in the world. God that we know and worship is like nothing we could even ever imagine. For he is the former of all things. He is the maker of everything. He was there before history ex existed. He wove the history together in eternity past. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Now you said it a second time, Jeremiah, because we really need to get it. And then it happened. Then it happened. Everything that this godly man had been saying, everything he'd been saying, you're not listening. You're making God sad. Seventy years captivity, not four years like the false prophets say. Seventy years. You need to go to captivity. And then God will give a new, new day. And then it happened. Then it finally happened. Then we come to Jerem uh, Lamentations of Jeremiah. By the way, it was very moving to see the president of Argentina, or Argentina, as, as we say in the West. It was very moving to see the president of Argentina at the Western Wall, mm -hmm. dancing, rejoicing. And then out of the blue, he was quoting... Rabbi Akiva, I believe it's Rabbi Akiva, when the temple was destroyed. Now, his reaction, according to the reports, was very different than Jeremiah's. And president of Argentina was talking about it when this old rabbi, who, by the way, saved the book of Song, Song of Songs in the Bible, he saved the book of the Song of Songs in the Bible. I know there are problem sites about him that are difficult, but okay. He said, remember this rabbi when he was watching the temple, being, after the temple was destroyed, he started to laugh. He quoted this part of history. And his uh, students said, why are you laughing? Nobody laughs. Why are you laughing? He said, I just saw the 
fox running over the ruins. And that means if the temple was destroyed, it will be rebuilt. I am rejoicing in the rebuilding of Jerusalem. I'm saying the idea, not word for word. And this president of Argentina talked about that at the Western Wall and was dancing with the people of Israel. I have not seen quite anything like this before. He was clearly hinting at, an, at a future, last week, he was clearly hinting at a future event that will wow. be happening soon that has prophetic significance, that has all, everything to do with the five red cows, red heifers. And by the way, one of them is discounted. One of them is discounted, but they got four to go, and the plans are intact. The official plan is, I say plan, I'm not, this is not a prophecy, but a plan is uh, they already done the practice exercise. It's a very difficult thing to do this because the fire has to be almost between 900 and 1,000 degrees. They had to have so much wood under it, different layers, They've practiced everything for the spring about Passover season or latest by Shavuot. Again, this is not a prophecy. I'm just saying what is the official plan. We will see. Okay, now to Jeremiah's, Jeremiah's uh, statement, which is very different from these rabbis. Uh, Jeremiah 3, verse 24. After, I'm going to read also a verse, verse 19 to verse 24. When Jeremiah saw the destruction of the temple, and if anyone today has eyes to see, we can compare this to the state of the believers today, how much confusion is in the spiritual house of God, how much destruction is there. But uh, that's just a pa parallel. From verse 19, Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wor wormwood and the gall, my soul has stemmed still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Jeremiah was humbled. Tradition says that he was on a hill watching the temple going up in a smoke. And when he was watching this, he started, that's a tradition, starting to write this uh, amazing book of Echa, Lamentation. And it's written a certain way in an alphabetic, according to alphabetic letters, I'm not going into this, but it's supernaturally written. Uh, it's unbelievable. He was humbled. This I recall to my mind, and therefore I have hope. Okay, like the rabbi saw uh, the fox uh, run over the stones, and that was to him a sign there will be a new temple. There'll be a new temple uh, yes, so verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassions fail not. A couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, two or three years ago, we had also the similar thing. Fox run uh, in front of the Western Wall and that was considered, there were pictures of it in a paper and and uh, they they considered it a sign that a temple will be rebuilt and it not, not only one fox there was uh, a few of them with the mother fox it was amazing but his compassions fail not the judgment is not the end 
Oh, if we only listen to the Lord that he would not have to do this judgment. But we don't listen. I don't mean you and I, but generally we are very bad hearing. But judgment is not the end. His compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And then Jeremiah says the big thing, the huge thing. This is different than uh, Kohelet, the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. He says in verse 24, The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. The reverse reverses. Jacob is the Lord's portion. Every believer who is in the Messiah is the Lord's portion. Yes, we are his portion, regardless in any land we are. But we say with Jeremiah, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. He doesn't say it only in his mind, but with his whole soul. He says, the Lord is my portion. He's my portion in my mind. I draw my understanding by the help of the Holy Spirit from the Word of God with all of His people. My emotions need also the Lord is my portion to heal my emotions, to quicken my emotions, to make alive my my emotions at the prayer altar and my will. My will needs also the Lord as my portion that I don't choose my own portion. The Lord is my portion for every function and part of my soul, whichever way we say it. Therefore will I hope in him. So he's saying, okay, the temple was burned up, but God is not burned up. Like the bishop said in uh, in, uh, Babylon, what is the name of Babylon in today's world? Uh, Iraq, they call it Iraq today. Yes, the bishop of Iraq in Iraq said, we lost everything. When he see almost 800 people being murdered by ISIS, he said, we lost everything. Well, it wasn't just 800 people from his congregation that he was feeding, but it was that little boy, that little boy, that his name was Andrew, and he called that little boy Andrew because he loved him. And he saw the ISIS come and brutally murder that little boy. There's so much similarity between what happened in Gaza and what happened with the persecuted believers. We need to pray for both fronts. But just like this bishop saw something very precious be taken away, he said, but we did not lose Yeshua. We did not lose the Messiah. Jeremiah saw the temple go up in smoke. Because for Jeremiah, the temple was not stones and gold and articles It was the place where God revealed himself, where we met God. But we still have our spirit where God lives. Now, I want to bring it to a close, but we have to visit Psalms with a few moments. Let me say say this. We are not able by our own strength and by our own wisdom to make the Lord our portion. If we, if we have the Lord as our portion, it's not because we are so smart and we are so strong. Yes, we must say yes to him. That's true. But it's because, it's because he has enlightened our eyes. He drew us. Draw me and we will run after you in the Song of Songs. Draw me and we will run after you, individually, but especially corporately. 
And then Psalm 16, verse 5. Oh, the Lord is my portion. Adonai is the, is the portion of mine inheritance. Yes, I have my inheritance. It's in a promised land and it's in a place that God assigned to me. But Lord is the portion of my inheritance. It means he is my inheritance in the inheritance. He is the portion in my portion. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup, of my cup. That's my part in it, what I daily take. He is my daily intake of this portion. Thou maintainest, you maintain my lot. What you have assigned for me, you are main, maintaining it. I could make mistakes and go astray, but you'll be faithful to keep me in check. That doesn't mean that we don't need to listen. We do need to listen. We need to take it, but he has the confidence that the Lord is maintaining that. The lines are falling to me in pleasant places. I have a good heritage. That's a whole message in itself. But I want to get to closer to the closing. 17, Psalm 17, verse 14. That there are men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world. Keep me from the men of the world. <coughs> which have they portion in this life, whose belly thou hast filled with thy hid, hid treasure. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. There are people that have their portion in this life. They chosen this life to, they, to be their portion. <coughs> there were times when we had, to, we had to make decisions. When the Lord called us, we had to make decision. Shall I follow or choose my own portion? Sometime we gave up big things for this. Some of us gave up big things, but these big things are nothing compared with eternal things. Mm. But, wow. but we, some of us had incredible offers in this world instead of... Uh, there's a minister of the word in, uh, uh, who's doing pastoral work in uh, Sweden, Michael Tall, amazing servant of the Lord. And he decided to be a minister of God. And as soon as he made the decision, I'm going to study the word of God and I want to be his servant. The next, almost the next day, it's almost the next day, I don't remember the exact day, he was offered a position in the company, I believe it was Ikea, company to be representative of this company in the whole of Russia and, and uh, he could set his own salary basically and he could have anything that he wanted and he said uh, no God has called me to be a pastor he said the company said to him uh, well think about our conditions I mean, you can basically ask for anything. This is an offer that we don't give to everybody. This was the idea anyway. He said, no, the Lord called me to serve him. Many of us had this kind of a situation. But now I'm going to nail this to an end. So much more to say about this. And it's Psalm 73. And that's one of our favorite verses in all of the Bible. I, Psalm 73, and before I read it, I want to just say this as a personal statement and a testimony. If I think of my own life, I could have made, I made my share of mistakes, I've had my share of that. 
But I could have gotten into any trouble. I could have gotten into such troubles that you are stuck forever unless it was for the word of God. It's not by our wisdom that we say, Lord, you are our portion. You are much better than sin. You are much better than the world. And by the grace of God, we say today, if the world offered us $100 million today, if we denied God, it's not even a question. We wouldn't even need to think about it. I'm not going to take peanuts for eternal treasure. You can't make the offer high enough. But this we say by the grace of God, because the race is not yet over. It's by the grace of God that we trust that this will be our understanding and resolve forever, that his portion is our portion. Him in his own, we have chosen instead of being in certain other circles that could be very unrighteous, we have chosen to be with the people of God, like Moses. Okay, Psalm 73 and the closing verses, 25 and 26. Whom have I in heaven? Who do I have in heaven but thee? There's none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. Wurbrand made the great statement. He said that we live in, until we really know the bottom life of life, I'm saying it with my own words, uh, we don't even know how much we're living in illusion. The real heart that is deep inside of us is satisfied with nothing but God. And we only really want him. But we need to be weaned from these illusions. We need to be weaned from these illusions. And when he was in a prison so many years, this wonderful Jewish man who met the Lord by reading the Bible from a German carpenter, <laughs> he, this was his resolve, and he, it never changed. At the, at, towards the end of his life, he said, this is the only thing I can talk about, is God. Okay, I talk with all kinds of people in the airplanes. I can talk about ball games a little bit. I can talk about business world a little bit. But I, it gets too boring. I can't do it too long. It always goes back to God. Not because I'm trying. I just don't know what else to do. It's like a bird can only sing. Don't tell the bird not to sing. That's the only thing it can do. That's our heart in the Lord. My flesh and my heart faileth. Yeah, for sure. Our heart is so failing. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Do you believe this? Do you believe with all of your heart that God is the strength of your heart? Just all we have to do is Keep calling on him, running away from sin, running away from the world, and keep calling on him. Keep calling on him. He does all the rest. There's nothing insecure about this. He will hold our portion. But at the same time, we don't want to be foolish and say, I'm so strong that I don't... No, no we don't trust in ourselves. We need to keep running away from these deceptions. But God, our trust is in God. It's not in our ability. Thank you, Lord, for being our portion. And then we pray for Israel. God, God of Israel, you promised to be the portion of Israel. We pray with all of our hearts that this nation, your beloved nation, that we are part of, will finally see that the answer is not in the East, 
and in the west and in the north, in the south, I mean. But you are the portion of Yaakov. You are the portion of Israel the way that you have said it. You have to mold this clay to have the form where you have room in it the way you want to be. We can't tear out Isaiah 53 or anything out of the Bible. But you will do it. You will be the salvation of Israel in totality. Israel will say, finally, whatever you want, we won't run to Egypt or anywhere. We'll run to you. It is your work, and the whole world will see that there's God in Israel. And you will take all of your own to glory. You will take all of your own to glory in white garments when the time is. And glory will go out of this nation to the world in the name of the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua, the Savior, Moshiach of the world. Amen. Amen.